Okay. Uh, some of the more straightforward problems are where uh, if you if you knew that there were two forces acting on the same uh, object, we just add the two forces together and we get the resultant vector, and from there we get speed and magnitude. But for this uh, uh, number one, we had to we understood that there was uh, um, the vector for the plane, there was a vector for the wind equals a resultant vector. But here things are a little bit opposite because uh, here we know what the resultant vector is. We know what the wind is. But we're trying to work backwards to figure out where is the plane, how should be how should the plane be pointing its direction so that it will end up uh, going in the direction that it's supposed to go in. So we say uh, vector P plus vector W equals vector R. We have vector R, we have vector W, so we have to subtract vector W from vector R to get to vector P. So this is the problem that requires a little bit of rearranging, but it's but once you get past that first step, then then really once you get to that uh, final vector that you're looking for, then speed and uh, direction um, is familiar because you've been doing it ever since. Um, that you've shown that you can do it on the quiz. OK, so let's look at uh, example two here. Okay, a traffic light at an intersection is hanging from two wires of equal length at 15 degrees below the horizontal. So we know that theta 1 and theta 2 are 15 degrees. If the traffic light weighs 560 pounds, so we know this is going to be this downward force. What is the tension in each wire keeping the light at an equilibrium? So in order to uh, to hold this 560 pounds in uh, equilibrium, we got to have equal forces kind of opposing it, right? Otherwise it, it's not going to be able to uh, to stay in place. So we know that 560, it's all vertical components. So we're going to create, and we know that these two sides is going to be balanced. So we know that that 560 can be broken down into two equal opposing uh, vectors that's pointing the other direction. So that's going to allow us to create a triangle that's going to help us out here. So we're going to create a triangle. Two triangles actually. And we know that there's going to be an opposing force that will allow this light or this um, traffic light to stay in place, right? So we're going to have opposing vectors pointing up. And it's going to be split evenly to balance out that 560 pounds. So it's 560 divided by 2. 280, yep. So we have 280 pounds that's going the other direction. Right? OK, so it says uh, what's the tension in e each wire? So we're going to be using this information to figure out what is the tension in the wires here. OK. Now um, what's going to happen is we're going to need to figure out what the angle here is. And this is just a little bit of review uh, from maybe a while ago is that if you have parallel lines and if there's a transverse going across, then your alternate interior angles are going to be the same. So this is 15 degrees here, but it's also 15 degrees here in this triangle that concerns us. But really, we're just going to focus on one of the triangles here. So I'm going to put this off to the side here. So we don't have as much distraction to deal with.
and we're trying to figure out what is the magnitude of the tension in the hypotenuse, right? So once you get to this part, then it's pretty straightforward, right? We can um, use um, Pythagorean theorem, or sorry, we can use, uh, in this case, which, so yeah, sine, right? Sine will allow us to get to this vector here, right? The sine of 15 equals 280 over vector t. or the magnitude of vector t. Okay, cross multiply. And then divide both sides by sine 15. Make sure in radiant, oh, sorry, uh, degree mode. Okay, um, applications, this is um, number one below. Anne and Mike are lifting a stone statue and moving it to a new location. Anne is pushing the statue with a force of 120 newtons at a 60 degree angle, while Henry is pulling the statue with a force of 180 newtons at 40 degree angle. What's the magnitude of the combined force they exert on the statue? Okay, so this is, I feel it's more straightforward because we know that um, we have two, um, vectors that we can create, we can add the two vectors together and figure out what that resultant vector is. Okay, so we'll say um, vector A plus vector M will create our resultant vector. Okay, so we'll create a vector for our component form for M. So there's my magnitude, there's my angle measure for M. Okay, for Mike, oh sorry. Sorry, the, the names got mixed up here. All right, so Anne and Mike, no Henry. So um, force of 108 Newtons, 40 degree angle. Okay, we'll add those together. Get the resultant vector. Okay, use your calculator.
double check my answer here. Okay, magnitude, so it's only asking for magnitude, it's not asking for direction. So. Okay, any questions here? Okay, page 26. Okay, number two on page 26 is going to feel a little bit like example two, the traffic light problem. Okay, 100 pounds um, pulling down on the two support bars. So we got to kind of break that vertical component into two um, components that, uh, two vertical components that's supporting the 100 pounds. Right, does anybody still need? Okay, so here's. Okay, Dr. Smith is hanging a sign for her medical practice that will be held by two support bars. If the bars make 60 degree angle with each other and the sign weighs 100 pounds, what are the magnitudes of the forces exerted by the signs of each support bar? So again, we're looking for the hypotenuse, uh, which is the diagonal support bars. Okay, so. So we start off with the sign. The sign is 100 pounds. And that 100 pounds is um, it's also how much it weighs in terms of the force pulling down on the support bars. So the bars make 60 degree angle with each other. Extend this out a little bit here. So that 100 pounds uh, has to be um, accounted for uh, from a vertical standpoint. So there's got to be a force kind of pushing going up in order to allow this to stay balanced, to stay in place. So we're going to take that 100 pounds and it's going to kind of be split between the two vertical sides here. So 50 and 50. So we're just going to focus our attention on one of the triangles because we just need to figure out um, what's the magnitude exerted on the sign of each support bar. So we just care about one of the support bars. Um, but everything is uh, should be symmetrical here. What do you think the angle measures are for these angles here? 60, right? 60, 60, 60. We know that ultimately if it's across the horizontal line, it'll be 180 degrees. So we know all these are. 60 degree angles. 
So I'm just going to focus my attention on one of the triangles. So it doesn't matter what you call it, call it, call it um, force or support bar. Um, I'll just call this F here for force. Either way, we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. Same thing as before. We're going to rely on sine because we're going to want to hit that angle, the opposite, and the hypotenuse. Divide both sides by sine 60. And the rest goes into your calculator. Yes, and the magnet. Oh, sorry. Uh, and we and, and we do. Yeah. So here, the reason why we don't have to rely on Pythagorean theorem is because we went straight directly to finding the hypotenuse. But if we had if we had something in component form, then we would have to go through Pythagorean theorem to get to that hypotenuse length. But in this case, we as long as we went through sine and theta. We have the degree and the angle. We can jump directly to the magnitude. OK, so a person in the canoe wants to cross a 65 foot wide river. He begins to paddle straight across the river at 1.2 meters per second, while the current is flowing perpendicular to the canoe. If the resulting velocity of the canoe is 3.2 meters per second, okay, what is the speed of the current to the nearest tenth? OK, so this is what we know. We know that. Um, let's say. Um, you, know, you can draw this multiple different ways here. But let's say the. Uh, a person is trying to head across. This way, All right? So we can call this the. Um, the canoe. But then we also know the current is running perpendicular to it. Oh, same same variable here. So let me call this um, P for person and then C for canoe. Sorry, C for the current. But we know the resultant vector. Right, a person is trying to cross this way, but the current is pushing it this way. We know that the canoe is actually going to take this path, right? Because of two different um, forces on it. So we know this is true, right? We know that um, um, person in the canoe has a vector, the current has another vector, and we're ending up with a resultant vector. So 
So for me, I just like to put everything in component form. Um, it just feels like I can do the same thing for every problem. So here's my person vector. Now this can, it'll all work out anyway. So if you decide that you're moving left and right and the current's perpendicular, it'll all work itself out. So um, even if you're not drawing it this way and your component is different or your signs are different, as long as you're consistent, we're all going to end up with the same answer. OK, so here. Um, he's paddling across at 1.2 meters per second, so that's a vertical component, so I'm going to say this is zero. And negative 1.2 just to. Um, just to match with what diagram I've created. OK, now the current. is the unknown, right? I don't know anything about the current here. But I do know that the resultant vector is 3.2 meters per second. Mm -hmm. hmm, maybe this won't work from a for working backwards here it looks like we would not be able to do this with uh, component form let me see okay i'll try to put in, in into component form the, the the way that the solution key had it was that they just did it just on the pythagorean theorem level and they did not break it down in component form because they didn't need it so here the idea is that if i have um, if I have a length of a right triangle, I can say that P squared plus C squared equals R squared, basically. Okay. And I'm missing that C value. So I know that P squared plus C squared equals R squared. And if I try to solve for C, my current is what I'm looking for here, the speed of the current. So this ends up being just a Pythagorean theorem problem without having to worry about all the components. So we know the person is 1.2. We know the current, uh, the resulting back of velocity of the uh, result in this 3.2. Okay, take the square root. Got two point or um, eight point eight. Take the square root. C is equal to okay. Because they only gave us information about velocity, and we know it's going to be a right triangle because of the perpendicular relationship. We didn't have to get it. We didn't have to go through the whole component form. We can just use Pythagorean theorem and draw it out and visualize the fact that we want the hypotenuse of a right triangle. OK, number four. Kristen walks north 7 degrees west for 200 meters. And then her second, and then she walks due east for 90 meters. How far and at what bearing is Kristen from her starting point? So we just have to add the two paths together and then find the resulting uh, vector. So I'll say uh, path one for her first leg of her trip. So north 70 degrees west, let's draw this out, see if we can visualize what's happening here. So we're starting north and we're going 70 degrees west, so that's going to be to the left. 
So that's 90 plus 70, which is what? 160, okay. There's my magnitude. She then walks due east for 90 meters, so that's pretty straightforward, right? For here, for uh, her path to uh, east and west, that means it's going to go positive 90, and then no vertical components, so zero. So we just say vector one plus vector two equals our resultant vector. Okay, so add the horizontal components together, 20 cosine 160 plus 90. And then 200 sine 160, zero. Okay, how far and what bearing? So how far is just magnitude. And then what bearing, we just have to convert our standard position into bearing. Okay, let's figure out what our angle is first, and then we can worry about the, the, um, the bearing um, involvement here. So y, b over a. Okay, I got negative 34.932. Okay, but we had to make some adjustment, right? How do we get to the true standard position here? Which quadrant is this in? Yeah, quadrant two, so I got to involve 180 here. Okay, but I got to get into bearings, so I have to figure out that 145 degrees, which is in the second quadrant, and convert it to bearing. So remember how we did bearing, um, where it was 450 minus bearing equals standard position? So if you look on the back page, 
same idea as well. If I want to find bearing, it's also just 450 minus standard. So um, doesn't matter if I'm converting from standard to bearing or bearing to standard. I can just do 450 minus whatever angle that I have. So that makes it easy, right? We don't have to worry about a different formula uh, to convert um, to bearing. And so we do 450 minus 145. OK, number five. Okay. OK, a pilot needs to plot a course that will result in the velocity of 500 miles per hour in the direction of due west. So that is the resultant vector that the pilot needs to get that plane to to uh, eventually travel. If the wind is blowing 100 miles per hour from 192 degrees, find the direction and speed that the pilot should set to achieve this resultant. OK. So we know that um, the plane vector plus the wind vector will create the resultant vector. But in this case, we're working backwards because we know what the end result has to be. We know what the wind uh, is blowing and we have to kind of figure out, OK, how can the pilot set his plane so that it can so that it can counter against that wind force and get it to point in the direction that it needs to point in. So I need to solve for P, right? So vector P is really vector R minus vector W. So let's create vector R. Okay. So ultimately, we want the plane to point in the direction of due west, 500 miles per hour uh, due west. So what can we, um, what's our vector going to be? What's our resultant vector? The uh, first door in the bathroom, which was clogged. Uh, uh, like the first urinal, it's like with the clog. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like just water like everywhere. Um, I don't know if we can. Uh, we should be able to work down for the front, front, front office because then they can get the. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. This is due west, though. So, you try again. What's the vector going to be? Okay. So, negative 500 because it's going left. And then no vertical components. So, we leave it at zero. Okay. Here's the tricky part the wind. Okay. So, the information they give you about the wind is a little bit tricky. And the reason that it's tricky is because it's this word here from 192 degrees. So I want to show you what uh, why is you know what's so tricky about that is where is 192 degrees? Third quadrant, okay. But it, it, it's not blowing 
in this direction, it's flowing from 190 degrees. So it's really this right here. So 190 degrees is how far is it from 180? 12. So it's actually going to be 12 degrees in the opposite direction. So that's well, that's kind of tricky, right? Because the 192 degrees, it's not towards it. It's kind of against it. It's coming from 192 degrees towards. So yeah, that's kind of tricky. So we have to understand that the wind blowing is really a theta of 12 degrees. So here's our wind. Hundred miles per hour. That hundred is our uh, magnitude, and the degree is twelve. So it's going to be a hundred cosine twelve and a hundred sine twelve. Okay, we have to subtract them, right? So I'm gonna make sure that we put a minus sign. And now we're subtracting each of these components to get to the planes um, vector. Okay, so we need to do negative 500 minus 100 cosine 12 and then zero minus 100 sine 12. Okay, thanks, Juan. And then zero minus hundred sine twelve. Okay, so direction and speed that the pilot should set to achieve this resultant. Now we just have to figure out theta and magnitude. OK, which quadrant is this in? Third, OK, so plus 180, right? Okay. 